The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. Ten birds came, came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was sprout, and its withered for lack of roots. Some seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seeds fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever had ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Some seed falls in the good soil and produces hundred sixty or thirty-four. I'm just curious who produces like hundred. Just raise your hand in your life right now that you consider you have a good soil around you and your seed is growing abundantly. One, only one. How about sixty? Sixty? Nobody, only one. How about 30? Just a little fruits on your tree. You have 130 right there. 20, 30, 10, 5. You don't want to raise your hand. I hope that whenever you come to this church, either 10 or 8 o'clock or any time, you are saved in this way. This is the good soil for you. But today, you know, I want to ask you that question again. Who is the first soul of faith in your life? When we had a meeting here for the Word Made Flesh to reflect on this gospel, some people mentioned their grandparents. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, my, oh, my. You know, the one who taught me how to pray, brought me to church, that's in my case, my grandparents took me to church 4 a.m. in the morning, every day. And because of that, I'm standing right here in front of you. Who is the first sower or even the sower of the seed of faith, of life, of truth in your life? Today we we will baptize a little boy today, Grayson. That's why you see a lot of a lot of people today. We will baptize this little boy and only of less than a year old. And I couldn't imagine that this boy will grow. Think about it today with this amount of people during the pandemic to be here to pray for this little boy Grayson. I believe that grace is already in good soil. Amen to that? In good soil. And this grace will continue to grow with this support, with this prayer. I bet you, whoever sitting right now in this church, you receive so much prayer, support, education, and a lot of reminders in your life. Force you to get up remind you to go to church every day. That's why you are here. So, today we need to thank all those people that help us to be who we are today. Yes, we need to be grateful to them. 
Because if not, we think we battle by ourselves. And you know what? It's not true. Even in my vocation as a priesthood, when I entered seminary at the age of 25, 26, I thought I was old enough to make my own decision because I was good enough, I was smart enough, I was holy enough, that's why God chose me. The day I was ordained, eight years later, I figured it out. I discovered that the day I was ordained is also the day my mom and my dad and my family, even my ex-girlfriend was ordained with me. You know why? Because they sacrificed every minute. Even today, my mom, my dad already passed away, but my mom in New Orleans, she cannot not try in for me. My whole life is in her life. And because of that, I'm so grateful to everyone, to everyone that touched my life spiritually, physically, even some of you cook for me, give me cookies and food and even money, everything. That's why I'm standing so vividly in front of you. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we reflect and say that, you know what, Father? Sometimes I receive, I don't know, bad seeds or what? Some discouragement around me, some fears around me, some dishonesty around me, to the point I can't trust anymore, to the point I can't have any more confidence in that person, then we become the seed for others. So we become good soil in the first place, like Grayson, receive faith and love and encouragement and education. Now, if you understand what I'm talking about, you have a responsibility to become good seed to others. God, in the first reading today, said, pour out rains, water from heaven to the good and the bad. And God never brings that water back to heaven unless the seed produces a lot of fruits. God is so generous to us, my brothers and sisters. God treats each one of us equally and lovingly. And so do we. We need to do the same. And then to the second reading today, Paul said that the suffering I have right now is nothing compared with the glory of God. Sometimes we right now suffer. Suffer with a lot of different reasons. Hopefully, you and I be patient enough, trust enough, that the seed has to be broken, has to be suffered in order to produce the new tree. So don't be afraid of suffering. If you aim high and fall and believe that this life is not the end after we get sick and die, we know that our life is much more than just a few years here. So that even after we die, that seeds will be growing and produce a lot of fruit. My dear brothers and sisters, today, reflect on our own, we are able to sow the seeds. How many times we sow the seed that fallen into the path, the thorny, rocky places, because our intention, our attitude is not pure enough. Today, let us trust God and entrust ourselves through our loved ones. Make our loved ones to feel safe, to feel gracious. You know, I ask myself, what kind of seed that we wanted to sow out there? Hopefully the seed of gracious, the seed of gratefulness, the seed of encouragement, the seed of trust, the seed of hope. Throw that out there, and I believe you, sooner or later, that seed will grow. Like my little Grayson today, he will grow as long as we do our part and let God take care of the rest of it. Amen.